Okay, in simplest terms, our next guest is an activist for social equity. Over the last 25 years, Claudia Romo Edelman has worked with the United Nations, you know them, mm -hmm. UNICEF, mm -hmm. the Global Fund, and the World Economic Forum. How she has time to do oh. anything else is a mystery. Oh, but she does. Because in 2018, she had already accomplished a ton, but in 2018, in her free time, she established We Are All Human as a public charity dedicated to advancing equity, diversity, and inclusion. Not just in her community, no, the global stage. That's right. And this all at a time, you know, communities large and small are feeling divided. Yeah. Claudia uses her influence as an agent for change around the world. So here to tell us all about everything that she does, and I'm sure more that we missed, <laughs> Claudia Roma Ellen, welcome. Thank you so much oh for my having God, me. God, thank you for being here. So quick, before we get into you, what did you think of that Kim Kardashian business? She is a very smart marketer. She is, and, the whole uh, family. She has made such an incredible emporium of uh, her wear mm -hmm. for women. Now she's going for men, and I think it's a brilliant marketing move. Whether she, men will take it on or not, I right. think that it remains to be seen. Right. That's true. Right. You know, I, lo I do love Cheetos. <laughs> 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 and exactly. That was a one surprising fact. Like, why the flaming Cheetos. Cheetos yeah. I gotta say, that's was it flaming. Ma marketing so. must be what Kardashian directly translates to in the English language. Well, and speaking of marketing, she is like uh, she is like the social social equity hello. marketer for the world. I know. So yes, let's get into the business. <clears throat> Mexican and Swiss, right? Living in New York, right? We like to understand yes. what shapes people. So what about your culture and where you grew up or how you grew up? How did those things inform who you are now and the organizations that you have created? I am Mexican and as in many Mexican families is woman power. So I was surrounded by really strong women. Um, my mother and my father met playing basketball. <laughs> As a fact, my father, my mother was a national player. She was part of the national team of basketball for Mexico. And, um, and she stopped her career as a basketball player when she had uh, children. And she then went into uh, doing economy after losing my two siblings. I was the only survivor of the family. Oh. So all of that, and I saw my mother surviving and thriving and, and, and getting really strong, very much like a Latina mother, mm -hmm. as any woman, I would say. But then uh, when she was 45, she decided that economy was not her strength and she wanted to become an actress. Oh. So I saw her going through the entire transformation of leading, leaving that part of herself and starting a completely new career. At and 45. seeing that she was not, it's not that she was fearless, she was panicking, you know, mm. like in doing that transition, a single mother with a daughter and a lot of uh, obligations, but she was not gonna let fear decide for her life. She wow. wanted to be an actress and she taught me that I needed to be fear free of making my own decisions and taking it on. And that's pretty much also, I think, that what happened when I moved to the States. And that was the first ever time that I heard that I was a Hispanic. I was like, what is that thing? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I'm a happy Mexican. Right, right. Like, I've never heard that term in my life, but mm -hmm. I, you know, like pretty much, I think that at a late, late age, started to, you know, like pivoting into doing something completely new for me, wow. which oh is a foundation. God. I, oh I love I love hearing these stories of you know it's never too late never I mean because you continue to accomplish so much so we are all human has has really done a lot of work to help mobilize voices that aren't particularly the loudest in the room they're not always amplified so can, please tell us a little more about the work that you're doing on that front again I moved to America I never heard that term before in my life I was like what is this Hispanic thing but then when I started getting into it I was like mm. well this group doesn't reflect the reality. Mm -hmm. I see the numbers, the numbers are, are strong, but the reality is weak. The numbers are big, but even Latinos feel small. So mm -hmm. if I'm gonna belong to this new group, I wanna make sure that we correct this reverse marketing right. problem. I'm a marketer, and like Kim Kardashian, I was like, I read, I'm ready <laughs> to take action and say like, what suit do we need to put onto what magazine so that we can rebrand Latinos, so that we are seen as positive contributors to the country. And I realized that we needed to tackle the unity and the unification of Latinos. We're very fragmented, Mexicans, mm -hmm. Colombian, Venezuelans, mm -hmm. we don't talk to each other. We needed to mobilize and equip corporate America because that's the best partner that Latinos can have. We want jobs, we don't want charity. That's we right. want to give, be given a chance and we, we, we need to go up. So we've been working with 320 companies so that they can have a Latino strategy and advance and making it a win-win-win for everybody. And yes, she's seriously. doing this not only from the mountaintop, she's made a podcast, which I love the name, it's called A La Latina. Let's take a listen. 
to be a Latina woman is everything. It's drive, it's passion, it's resilience, it's perseverance for our families and for our communities. That's why we started this podcast. Hola, I'm Claudia Romo Edelman. And I'm Cynthia Kleinbaum Milner. And this is a podcast a la Latina. I love it. <laughs> what are you uncovering in these conversations that you're having? We know that Latinas are as capable as anybody to be in senior positions, but we're not. We're 9% of the population, but less than 1% mm -hmm. in the top of, of all organizations in politics, in corporate America. So we started looking at what do we need? We need inspiration, we need the networks, and we need a playbook. Yeah. We're most of the times we're the first first generation of going to college, the first one that are gonna, getting into these uh, senior positions. Yeah. So we need to understand what are the rules of the game, right. the manuals. You buy a toaster, it comes with manuals. We get into corporations, don't, no one tells us what are the rules of the game. So we're interviewing the most important Latinas in the C-suite of the Fortune 500 companies and asking them to give us a playbook, to give us I would us like to sit in the room I, you yeah, I was the just gonna say. <laughs> As Woo! though this were not enough, I was telling the girls uh, this morning, you screaming. know the, who is Barack Obama? Who is? You made your own series with famous Latinos with Hispanic Rising Star. I have to say, I, my favorite I one know. is Justice Sotomayor. Oh! oh. So and thank Celia you Cruz. for doing this. And, but wait, there's more, because you apparently have 26 hours in a day when the rest <laughs> of us have. Your family business, Sotol. Right, so the children books is the first ever series of biographies for Latino children mm -hmm. and non-Latino children about our own heroes. Mm -hmm. So that we can get inspiration and if you can see it, you can be it. And all oh, of a okay. sudden, my family has been producing this liquid cactus-based spirit called Sotol. It's not my, my product, that's the name of the yeah. cactus. Yes. Agave is the cactus that you make for tequila and mezcal. Sotol is the cactus that you make Sotol. So Sotol is the tequila of the north of Mexico, Chihuahua, and it is as tasty as uh, tequila and mezcal, but without the sugar. I am Sign the first. Me. Open that baby up <laughs> Merry right Christmas. Now. Thank you. <laughs> Sotol is the name that everybody will start hearing of. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that tequila was not known 20 years ago and then mezcal 10 years ago. Sotol, Sotol. is going to be the next big thing. And I'm the first woman in my family, and I'm uh, really excited to bring it to market here in New York. Unbelievable. Oh my. What Claudia, can she do? She can do everything. And you're going to be able to taste it at our gala, December 7th. Thank you. Um, which we aim to make uh, the Met Gala for Latinos here in New York. So done, that all done, eyes are done. on us. Are you gone? Claudia, exactly. I'm waiting for an invitation from, from the woman of the hour. Claudia, it's always great to see you. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for doing the work you do. All the information you need about We Are All Human, mm. including the gala, you can find at weareallhuman.org. You can listen to A La Latina wherever you listen to your podcast. And as for the Sotol, stay tuned. Ha, 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 ha.